Isn't it fascinating how the same cluster of stars can tell a thousand different tales? Take the unmistakable Big Dipper, or Ursa Major if we're getting technical. It's often depicted as this great bear, or a plow for those in the UK, a type of farming tool. This famous grouping of seven bright stars is like a celestial rush arch test. Every culture sees something unique. For the Chinese, these stars form Beidou, or Northern Dipper, where it plays a role in folklore and in Feng Shui. If you ask the Burmese, they'll tell you it's a bazantaja, a crustacean, maybe a lobster or a shrimp, scuttling across the night sky. Head over to Malaysia and suddenly it's not a creature, but a vessel. They see a canoe paddling eternally across the Milky Way River. Now the Tohono Udham people of the Southwestern United States, they look up and they see the drinking gourd, a tool that's not just for quenching thirst, but from sipping from the well of the heavens. Isn't it remarkable? Every culture under the sun has looked up at the same stars and come up with a completely different constellation playbook. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Today I'm joining you from some of the darkest skies in the world, Tucson, Arizona. And I'll be talking about constellations. These are patterns in the sky that are a universal language, yet they tell a different story from every corner of the globe. Let's connect the dots and dive into the stories written in the stars. Constellations are the ultimate dot-to-dot -dot puzzles that H's Sky Watchers created by connecting stars. Way back before Netflix and smartphones, people spent a lot more time staring up at the stars. And luckily for them, they didn't have light pollution. They began to notice certain star patterns recurring night after night, and human imagination being what it is, they started connecting those stars to form shapes or constellations. They named them after heroes, animals, and objects that were important or symbolic in their cultures, like how the Greeks saw a hunter and called it Orion, or how the ancient Babylons saw the same stars and thought, hey, that looks like our legendary king, Gilgamesh. Constellations were super handy for ancient people. They were like the GPS of the past. Sailors used them to navigate the oceans and farmers used them to figure out when to plant and harvest. They're also great for storytelling, keeping myths and legends alive across many generations. Today, there are 88 officially recognized constellations. And of course, it was down to the IAU and they covered the entire sky. Listing all of these 88 constellations in a single video might be a bit much, like reading out an intergalactic phone book, but I can definitely give you the gist of it. The 88 constellations are like a mixtape of the greatest hits from cultures all over the world. You've got the Zodiacs, which are probably the A-list celebrities of the skies because they star in astrology. That's your Aries, Taurus, Gemini, all the way through to Pisces. Then there are those ones that are named after creatures like Cygnus, the swan, Leo, the lion, or Draco, the dragon. There's a whole zoo up there. Some are named after inanimate objects like Lyra, which is basically an ancient Greek harp, or Aquarius, which is an old guy carrying a water jug. Not to forget, there are heroes and heroines like Perseus and Andromeda, not to be confused with the galaxy. And there's loads of wild myths behind them. A lot of constellations are pretty easy to spot, especially if you're in the right hemisphere and it's the right time of the year. Others are more like indie bands of the sky, not as well known and a bit harder to find. For instance, ever heard of Antlia, the air pump? Probably not the first constellation you'd learn about in Astronomy 101. And the coolest part? Each of these 88 constellations has its own backstory, whether it's a myth from ancient Greece or a tool from the scientific revolution or an animal from Aboriginal Australian star law. So while I might not rattle off all the 88 names right now because well, it's gonna be a mouthful, just know that no matter where you are on the earth, when you look up, you're seeing a piece of that gigantic sparkly map that our ancestors drew.
Sure, the stars in a constellation might be light years apart in space, but from our tiny vantage point, they look like they're right next to each other. That's all for this week's video. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.